Tonight in Flashback, a Queensland motor racing fairy tale. It's 40 years since Dick Johnson won Bathurst, 41 since he lost after colliding with a rock. Both events inextricably linked. Max Futcher reports. If he keeps that up, I hate to think what the final lap time Oh, he's hit the fence oh. and he's gone off the track into a tree. Yeah, that was uh, a little bit unexpected. Australia. I'm Mike Raymond for the Seven Network. Welcome to our telecast. Australia's great race never won by a Queenslander and in 1980 Dick Johnson was leading. Oh we've had another bang and is that the Dick race Johnson. leader? Dick Johnson. The message we're getting back from our camera position there is he'd hit a rock. Spectators rolled it down the hill. Unless I can get $40,000 to rebuild the car the telecast became a telethon. Dick, the switchboards at all the seven stations across Australia are jammed of people who are so upset about what has happened and they are ringing and just genuinely pledging money to help you. Checks flowed in $78,000, so Dick got building to repay the faith. It gave me as much pressure as I've ever had in any year, so I didn't want to let anyone down. Public support was enormous. I love to have a beer with Dick, to wish him well at Bathurst. And we know this year he'll do the trick. We have touch-off for the 81 Hardy 1000. Johnson and it's Dick Johnson of Queensland. But on lap 122... And we've had a horrendous crash at the top of the mountain. We cannot have a restart. Well, that means that Dick Johnson is the winner under those conditions? Yes, he has won. The first time a driver had won without crossing the finish line. You said you owed a lot of people for this race this year. I owe Australia. I really felt as though that uh, we'd done our very, very best to pay everyone back for the fight they had in us. At Mount Panorama this weekend, Dick Johnson as popular as ever, 40 years on from his first Bathurst win. That has been a dream of mine ever since I was a kid. What a great story. Time for the weather now. Here's Tony. Thank you, Katrina. Hello again, everyone. This was the scene at Matapili late yesterday as that line of severe storms hurried across the southeast. You can see this impressive shelf cloud stretching from horizon to horizon. A big thanks to Mr S Photography for braving the elements and sending in this great shot. Today, much more settled and a little cooler thanks to a subtly wind change. 19 to a top of 28 degrees in Brisbane. Make that 26 at the Gold Coast Seaway. On to tomorrow's chart, southeast winds will continue to bring a couple of showers to coastal parts here while the next round of storms gets going. Going well inland, these thunderstorms should become more widespread later in the week, reaching coastal areas from around Wednesday. Across the nation tomorrow, plenty of cloud for Sydney and Canberra. A different story in Perth, looking at blue sky and a top of 33 degrees. Back to northern Queensland, a possible shower for Cairns, dry in Townsville and Mackay, and a storm on the way for Mount Isa, 36 degrees there. Heading south, storms for Longreach and Roma, then a bit more settled further east, the odd shower possible for Gympie and Toowoomba. In the southeast, a mix of patchy cloud and sunny breaks with the odd passing shower around 18 to 29 in Ipswich, tops of 27 for both coasts. So in Brisbane, there's that 40% chance of a shower, but it should be dry most of the day, 19 up to 28 degrees. Looking further ahead, a possible shower, 29 on Tuesday, then afternoon storms more likely on Wednesday for the first day of the ashes test at the Gabba, likely to ease to showers from Thursday onwards, tops back into the 30s. Katrina, some more unsettled weather on the way. Thanks, Tony. That is all from us this Sunday. Thanks so much for your company. Live and local news in the morning with Bianca Stone on Sunrise. But now it is time for the Big Bash. Have a great night.